Welcome to part two of our why do we have partial discharges in the electrical field video. So um, here once again we have a presentation of a homogeneous field. We have two electrodes. We are going to focus on the internal electrical field only. On the outside it will be inhomogeneous but we don't worry about this right now. So this shall be our homogeneous field. So now let's imagine we have a void inside. We have an enclosement with air or with some kind of gas inside. Where can this happen? Well, example given, it could happen in transformers, which are dry type transformers, and then during the curing process, something was not done right and some bubbles of air remain, bubbles of gas. Um, in an oil filled transformer, for example, we could have small air pockets trapped closer to the, to the windings or to the paper, for example, but these these air bubbles could also become free once the transformer is on and once the oil is moving inside and then we would have a moving air bubble and this could be between two electrodes. Furthermore, for uh, cables, for example XLPE cables, we could have such a state as well when during the manufacturing process there were, there were issues, there were mistakes and then gas bubbles could stay behind and could stay inside the XLPE. So these are just examples. Now let's imagine we are going to have an air bubble here. And I'm going to draw the air bubble quite big. Something like this. Now, if this would be exactly the same insulation material, nothing would much happen. But the idea is that this is solid and this is gaseous uh, insulation material. So what is going to happen now? The electric field lines will change. Let's imagine in here this is air and there are a couple of formulas and a couple of factors uh, how we can describe certain insulation materials and one of them is epsilon and let's say the air has an epsilon of epsilon zero of around one or let's use the then so that's a one and imagine that the insulation material around here has an epsilon an epsilon r of around let's say 2. So this would be an epsilon r as well. Around 2. There are numerous insulation materials, especially solid ones, uh, XLPE and uh, other kinds of plastic that have something around 2.1, 2.3, some of them even 2.5. So let's just say 2. If the epsilon r in here, out here, is twice as big as in here, so this is only half of it, we will actually have an electric field that is higher. And this could be symbolized with two extra electric field lines. Now the distance is only half of them, which means that the outer electric field will be changed as well. And I'm going to try to draw it as good as I can. It will look horrible, but that's what it is. So I hope you understand what I mean. The well, maybe this is not really drawn really well. Maybe this is a little bit better. And our electric field inside changes on the outside as well. So this is one of these situations where I try to use equipotential lines. And in order to do that, I have to draw them. It takes me quite a while. So let's fast forward again. So I want to be honest, this is way too much. The bending here is too much, but I, I, I am trying to bring a point across and I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So uh, equipotential lines could mean example given KV. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's imagine that this was six KV. From here to here, we had a voltage of six KV. Um, this means, that we have a concentration in here, in the middle. So this from here to here is 1 kV. And here it is much smaller. So this means rather than having a nice and smooth distribution of our 
6 kV of our electrical field, of our potential from this electrode to this electrode, we are ending up with a problem. Because in here, this is the weakest point. This is our air. This is our gas. Let's say it is air. Epsilon R of 1, more or less. So this is the weakest point already in our installation system. Because the partial discharges will start at a much smaller, smaller kV per millimeter value than in the solid insulation material. However, in this point, from here to here is 1 kV from here to here. Meaning, in this, from here to here is already 2 kV. The weakest part in our insulation gets the highest amount of kV, the highest amount of electrical field, which can be described in kV. We are going to have partial discharges in here under the assumption, of course, that we are above electrical field critical. I didn't draw it like this here this time, but now just imagine the small bubble of air that in reality should be exposed to, I don't know, to 2 kV or even less, is now suddenly exposed to minimum 2, maybe even, even 3 kV. So, we are going to have partial discharges in here and if this is a solid material and the partial discharges happen inside there, what is going to happen? The partial discharges will increase the pressure in there, but most likely it will start destroying the outside of the bubble and then moving towards the electrodes and destroying the solid or liquid insulation system more. This is not always 100% true. There could be a possibility where a carbonization of the insulation material happens and then you could have some kind of carbon, carbon structure around here. So this would not be 100% conductive but semiconductive. This could lower the electric field in there for a while. But uh, as soon as you move it, as soon as there are vibrations or something else, or the carbon could actually loosen up, fall down, and then you could have partial discharges again. We're going to stop the video here. The main idea was just repeat it to talk about we need for partial discharges, we need an electric field. It needs to be elevated. And we didn't change much. In the first video, we changed the electric, um, uh, the geometry of, the, of one of the electrodes, of the configuration, but we kept the same distance. Here, we kept the same distance between the electrodes as well. We didn't change much about this insulation system, as a matter of fact, nothing. But we introduced, in the middle of it, we introduced a bubble of air, and we just showed that this bubble of air will be exposed to an even higher electrical field than it would usually be on the solid insulation material. Thus, we have an elevated electric field. And once again, if this is high enough, above critical, we could have partial discharges. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like that, do me a huge favor and just hit the like button. Thank you very much. Bye.